Let's talk about the point slope form of a line. Now, uh, just refresh your memory. We have the slope intercept form. Slope intercept form looks like this y is equal to mx plus b. And if you got it solved for y and everything's linear, then your slope is whatever's before your x. So this m here is our slope. And the number at the end is your y intercept. <clears throat> now we have our oddball cases. And remember our two oddball cases, one of them was uh, where we got x is equal to number, like x is equal to 2. That's going to be a vertical line at 2. And um, if we have that, m is undefined. And uh, specifically, when we're looking at points with this, we'll have like 2 comma something, and we'll have over here 2 comma something. Uh, if you're given two points, what you'll find is that your x parts will be the same, but your y parts can be anything. So this might be 2, 3, this might be 2, 4, but the x parts are the same. That'll become important later on. Our other one is if you have uh, y is equal to a number. That's going to be a horizontal line at that number. And if you got that, m is undefined. And um, your points will be um, something comma three, and something comma three. The the key part on this is the the y will always be three no matter what. You can have anything for x. You can have one three. You can have two three. You can have five three. You can have negative seven three. Now the point slope form is a tool that allows us to put something into the slope intercept form. I'm going to work this slightly different. At the very end, I'll show a point slope form, just so you can say I showed you one of them. I used to show um, both the point slope form and slope intercept form in class, and I had uh, stu two students from Japan one semester. And the girl, she it was a three-hour class. The girl, she sat in the, the back of the room and she uh, she slept the entire time. And she'd wake up come test time, get her hundred, and go back to sleep. <coughs> um, never missed a problem even on final. Uh, the guy, he paid attention. And um, I asked him one night why he was paying attention. A weird, weird thing for an instructor to ask a student. Um, both of them had taken up through Calc 2, Calc 3 in high school. They could have been teaching the class easily. Um, but uh, high school credit at that point in time in Japan did not transfer as uh, college credit over here. They came over here, they're like business majors or something, and they just had to take any math class. Um, a lot of the colleges now have testing where they can test out. <coughs> but back then they didn't. <coughs> he came up uh, after I covered this topic in class one night, and he said, why are you covering both forms? And he you know, asked respectfully and everything. And I said, well, you need both, depending upon what the problem looks like. And he proceeded to prove to me I was wrong. You could do everything with slope-intercept form. And I, I like formulas that work 100% of the time, um, instead of using like two or three different formulas. But uh, again, I'll satisfy the requirement of actually showing you one at the very end. Okay, our first problem here. I'm given uh, one half, one half, one two, slope is three. <coughs> it says find the equation, equation of the line, um, write the equation in slope intercept form, and then graph it. Well, this is our steps for finding the equation line. We put these uh, steps up before with very simple problems. They get a little bit, a little bit tougher in a section. Uh, step one: We're going to find m. Well, in this first one, m is given. They tell us slope is three. And step two: Plug in the given point for x and y and m from step one
into y equals mx plus b and solve for b. <coughs> okay. So we've got y is equal to mx plus b. And they give us a point here. They give us 1, 2. So we can plug this in for x, plug the 1 in for x, and plug the 2 in for y. So 2 in for the y. m from step 1 we said was 3. And then that's times uh, x, which is 1. And then plus b. And then we're going to solve for b. Well, 3 times 1 is 3. Take the 3 over to the left side. we got 2 minus 3 which gives us b is equal to negative 1. <coughs> now step 3 says to write your answer down. Actually, let me write that out. I wrote it last time, but... So we're going to write our answer. Our answer is y is equal to mx plus b. Well, they just told us m is 3, so we've got 3x, and b is negative 1. So that's our equation line. Now, um, we already said slope is 3, and I'll put that in fraction form. That's 3 over 1. And our y-intercept is negative 1. Well, remember, slope is changing y over changing x, so this goes up 3 and right 1. <coughs> So to graph this, I'm going to go over my y-intercept y and put a point right there. And from there, we're going to use our slope to get our second point. So we're going to go up 3 and right 1. So up 3 and right 1, and that's where we put our second point. And after we get our second point, we draw a line through them, and that would be our graph. <coughs> I apologize for the little coughing and sniffling and so forth. I'm still sick. Ah, uh, see. Find the equation line containing the given point and with the given slope. Write the equation slope in intercept form, graph the line. Okay, so we're given a point again, negative 5, 1. And our slope is negative 3 halves. <coughs> well, go through our steps. Remember, step 1 is to find m. Well, m is given. It's equal to negative 3 halves. Step 2, plug in the given point for x and y. Uh, this is x and this is y. So I'll plug 1 in for the y. m from step 1 we said was negative 3 halves. And x is negative 5. <coughs> and then plus b. And then we want to solve for b. Well, negative 3 times negative 5 gives us positive 15 over 2 plus b. Take 15 halves to the left side, becomes a negative 15 halves. Now, um, we can use our mixed mixed number rule on this. Um, if you got a number out in front and then a fraction, that neg if the negative is there, it has to be up on top with a 15. But what you do is you take 1 times 2, gives you 2, and then you add the negative 15. And that gives you a negative 13 over 2. So again, what I did is I multiplied 1 times 2, gives you 2, and then you add it to the negative 15, which gives you negative 13. And the denominator stays as is. And step 3, write our answer down. Well, m was uh, negative 3 halves, and b was uh, negative 13 halves. So our answer is y is equal to negative 3 halves minus 13 halves. Okay. M is negative 3 halves. Changing the y, we're changing x. It's negative 3, so we go down 3. Positive 2, so we go right 2. Now, uh, our y-intercept is negative 13 halves. Well, if I put that in the calculator, that would give us uh, negative 6.5, or negative 6.5, however you want to think of it. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 6.5, we go put a point there. And we're going to use our slope to get our second point. 
<clears throat> well, from that point, we're going to go down two. No, down three, sorry. Right two. So down three. One, two, three, and right two. And that gives us our second point. So again, we we put a point at our y-intercept, then we w use the slope to get our second point. Down three, right two. And we draw a line to them. <coughs> and that would be our graph. And um, let's look at our next one. Let's turn the page here. says 401 undefined slope if we went back to our two oddball cases uh, we had uh, x equals a number and that was a vertical line and we had y is equal to a number that was a horizontal line um, when we had a vertical line that's where we had undefined slope so vertical line is undefined slope and remember that's what x is equal to a number so x is equal to something well, uh, this tells us that it passes through 4, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Passes through 4, 1. I know it's a vertical line because it says undefined slope, so it has to look like that. And uh, that would actually be x is equal to 4 for our equation of the line. Um, right to slope intercept form and graph it. Now it says write it in slope intercept form. We can on this one, um, but those would be our answers. Okay, this one, we got negative 2, negative 3, and slope is 0. Okay, this is another one of our oddball cases. We said uh, when the slope is 0, that's a uh, horizontal line at uh, a number, or at a point. Um, well, it passes, passes through the point negative 2, negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3 would be right there. And we said uh, it's a horizontal line. So it looks like that. We know a horizontal line is y is equal to a number, and that's uh, down at negative 3. So that would be our answer. Again, it's very easy. Slope is equal to 0. You know it's a horizontal line. You know it's y equals a number. And it will be y equals to the y part of this point. Same up here. Undefined means a vertical line, which means x equals a number, and it'll be x equals the x part of this point. Always. Let's look at number five here. It tells us it's a horizontal line uh, that contains negative four, negative five. Find the equation line. Um, okay, horizontal line. I know what that is. That's a um, looks like that, and that's always y is equal to a number. Well, since it passes through this point, um, and our y part of this point is negative five, our answer will be y is equal to negative five. <coughs> uh, next one. Tells us we got a vertical line at five negative two. Vertical line that's uh, up and down, and that's always of the form x is equal to a number. And since it passes through this point five negative two, it'll be uh, x equals the x part of this point. So x is equal to five, and that's our answer. Now the next problem I'm gonna need some more space, so I'll start a new uh, new page. Go back to find the equation on the line um, where we're not talking about the oddball cases, at least for a couple of problems. So let me uh, start a new page. Okay, so um, 410. And we got 0, 2. And same instructions find the equation on the line that contains the uh, given points. Well, remember our steps. Uh, find equation line. Step one is to find m. Well, this time m isn't given. So, but we do have a formula. Remember, y m is equal to y two minus y one over x two minus x one. 
So we're going to plug this in for x1, this in for y1, and x2 and y2. Again, this is my first point, so I'll label it as x1, y1. This is my second point, so I'll label that as x2, y2. Before I plug in those values, I'm going to replace my variables with parentheses. You'll find this will help on not messing up on the signs. y2, we said, was 2, so put that in. y1 was 10, so we put that in. Uh, x2 is 0, so put that in. And x1 is 4, so put that in. Well, 2 minus 10 gives us negative 8, and 0 minus 4 gives us negative 4. And negative 8 divided by negative 4 gives us a positive 2. Now, step 2 is still the same. That hasn't changed. Just step 1 has changed slightly here. Remember, step 2 said to plug in the given point for x and y, and m from step 1 and solve for b. Well, this time we're given two points. And uh, which one do you pick? Well, whichever one you want. Whichever one looks easier to you. The 0, 2 looks a little bit easier, so I'll put that in for x, put that in for y. So y is 2, m from step 1 we said was 2, and x is 0, plus b. And then we want to solve for b. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, so we end up with b is equal to 2. Now we can't forget step 3. Step 3 was to actually write down our answer. Um, from step 1 we said m was 2, and from step 2 we said b was 2, so we'll plug those in. And that would be our answer. y is equal to 2x plus 2. <clears throat> Let's take a look at another one of those. Okay, I got negative 2, 8. And I got negative 4, 13. <coughs> well, go through our steps again. Step 1 is to find m. And we'll have to use our formula again. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is our first point, so I'll label this. This will be x1, y1. This is our second point, so this will be x2, this will be y2. We'll go through and replace our variables with parentheses. y2 was 13. y1 is 8 x2 is negative 4, and x1 is negative 2. Mail up on top, 13 minus 8 gives us 5. And down below, um, we got uh, negative 4 and then a minus parentheses minus. That becomes a plus. So this is negative 4 plus 2. Negative 4 plus 2 gives us negative 2. So that's m. <coughs> Well, step two, plug in the given point for x and y and the slope from uh, step one. Um, I don't suppose it matters which one I plug in. Uh, I'll plug in the first point. Looks a little easier. Plug that in for x, plug that in for y. So y is 8. m from step one we said was uh, negative 5 halves. And x is um, negative 2 plus b. Now, negative times a negative is positive, so those disappear. Those two is going to cancel, so we got just left with five. Take the five to the left side becomes a negative five, and we get b is equal to three. Set three. Write down our answer. Well, m we said from step one was five halves, or negative five halves. Sorry. So we plug that in. B was three. So our answer is y is equal to negative 5 halves x plus 3. <coughs> okay, let's look at number 9. Same instructions. Negative 1, 3, and 5, 3. Now it's important that you um, recognize the oddball cases, because one of the oddball cases uh, will work on these three steps, but um, it just seemed weird. And the other one won't work at all. So it's best just to be able to spot them. How do you spot them? Uh, you look at your, if you're given two points, uh, if they have the same value, same x values or same y values, that tells you something. See how the, this uh, two points here? The y parts are the same, aren't they? 
Since y parts are the same, our answer will be y equals whatever that number is. So y is equal to 3. Now our last problem, we got negative 2 and 5, and we got negative 2 and 7. Well, again, I noticed something here. The x parts are the same, aren't they? So our answer will be x equals whatever the, that number is, which is negative 2. So those are our answers for those two. And um, I don't think I have room here. Maybe I do. I promise you I'd uh, talk about the point slope form. Again, I don't like it. I love uh, the three steps I outlined above because it handles all the problems. doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, steps change it slightly, uh, how you find M or how you find B, but they're still the same three steps. Our point, slo point slope form says Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. So if you're given a point like this one, you're given 1, 2, and you're given your slope is 3. <coughs> well, this would be our X1, this would be our Y1, so if they give you a point, so then you got y minus 2 is equal to 3 times x minus 1. And then you solve it down from there, uh, solving it for y. And it, I, I granted, it'll probably save you one step, maybe. Uh, maybe two steps if you're lucky. Um, but again, it's another formula to memorize. Uh, those three steps I've outlined, do them all. So that's what I'll stick with. And I believe that's the last problem. So point slope form of a line.